Team, what's going on today? Sage here, aka the Golf Hacker, and a very warm welcome to all the players out there that have joined today from Golf Sidekicks channel to watch the back nine of this course vlog. The link to the front nine on the Player in Chief's channel is linked in the description below. But right now it's time to see whether I have the minerals to convert what is undoubtedly one of my best front nines here at Cruise Hill. Unfortunately, I've pulled this one left. It does not have the legs and I'll be dropping one from behind the creek for my third shot on this 10th hole par 3. There's a chance for me to lose my head here and completely derail this round. But here's something I've learned and that's never to follow a bad shot with a dumb shot. I know the importance of getting this next shot on the green, really taking my time to pick a landing spot, focus on making good contact with the ball. The last thing you need here is to be back in the drink and adding more penalties to the scorecard. So I've ripped a good drive up the middle of this fairway, but I've left myself with a tricky shot into the D floor over the top of a bunker. You can see the pin is right in behind the centre of the bunker, but you can also see that's the highest point of the lip that sits at the back of the bunker. Why not take some of the risk off this shot and aim just to the right of the bunker where the lip's a little bit lower. This one goes over the top, lands on the green, and I've got myself a look here at Bird. I can't convert, but it's a good bounce back after the double bogey on the last. We'll take the par and we'll move on. The twelfth hole here at Cruz caps off a challenging start to the back nine and is almost certainly that hole on the course that often derails my round. There's a creek running across the start of the fairway and out of bounds all the way down the right hand side. What I've learnt with holes that you don't feel confident on is to build confidence in a particular club and use that club every time you hit the hole. After hitting a good strike with that club on that particular hole, do your best to visualise or imagine yourself hitting that very same shot at the same target with the same club every time you play the hole. Any extra confidence you can gain going into this shot will really help the result. This one sets me up with about 150 yards into the green. Never minding the flag, my priority here is to do my best to get it on the green. That's the number one priority. Here's a short game shot which I'm really struggling with, one that Caroline and I touched on in one of my recent lessons. Not a shot I can typically play well, but I get away with this one and now I've got a look at par. The old me never used to be able to get up and down around the green, but having practiced my short game, I can tell you the game of golf becomes a whole lot more fun when you do have the ability to scramble for a par every now and again. I missed the green with this one, I had a reasonable chip out of the rough, and here I am dropping a reasonably long putt for par. I'm pretty chuffed with this one. So here on this par 3 I play a reasonable tee shot, landing short and a reasonable follow up putt from the fringe. It leaves me with 7 foot to the hole, but these are the putts I always used to miss. If you are serious about dropping your scores, it's not sexy, but you need to spend the time on the putting green getting yourself confident hitting those 3, 4 and 5 foot of putts. You'll be amazed at how quickly your scores will start dropping when you start to sink 4 or 5 putts from over 5 feet.
Here's another example of where amateur golf doesn't have to be pretty. Three pretty mediocre looking shots, but I've earned myself a 14 foot putt for par. When you're navigating the golf course, don't get drawn into thinking you have to play it like a pro. Just get the ball in the hole in as few shots as possible. Don't overcomplicate it. Unfortunately, I'm not able to make this putt, but a bogey on the stroke index one is not a bad result. See how an awful tee shot here has spiralled unnecessarily into yet another par 3 double bogey. I've chunked the first one, but then I've got pretty with the second shot and left it short, and then I've followed it up with a couple of bad putts. Don't let this be you. If you miss with your first shot, make sure you think through your next shot and make it count. Get it on the green as your number one priority. Two clean shots with my four hybrid and I'm right down by the green on this par 5 which is just shy of 500 yards. If you can't hit your driver, remember that you don't need it to score well. I'm not able to convert this one to a bird, but another par on the scorecard is a win. I had every opportunity to make this a great hole and the driver never came out of the bag. Don't be afraid to leave it there. Here on the 17th we have a short par 4 with a narrow fairway down the stretch at the green with a couple of hazards. I take the hybrid off the tee, get myself down there somewhere safe and in touching distance of the green. It gives me a wedge in and look where it lands me. Again, the driver hasn't come out of the bag on this par 4, but I'm on the green with a look at Bird. Once again, I'm not able to convert this one, but we're headed to the 18th now at 11 over. So as the sun sets on this round and I fail to make a tidy finish of these 18 holes, you can see your golf doesn't have to be pretty to score well. This round has had penalties, duffed shots and bad putts, but it's also had some great shots, ugly shots that do the trick and a touch of luck here and there. As I finish with a double bogey, that takes my total score to 83, which is equal to my personal best round here at Cruise Hill. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Please let me know in the comments down below where you think I could have improved. Hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for joining players.